these guys today are Johnny Come Lately. They have got no psycho ring psychology. They've got no ring savvy. They could not walk into an arena, meet a man for the first time, and go in a wrestling ring and have a match with him. They could not do it. By Roddy Piper. Yeah, Roddy, I know about it. Uh, and Buddy Rose couldn't happen to a better guy, buddy. Glad you're there because you're down there. The prick. All right. Why is that? Number one, he couldn't work. Number two, he was a bullshitter. And number three, he lied to everybody he ever goddamn met. Piper forgot where he came from. Too much dope, Piper. A lot of people say that, so. Well, I'm the one right in line. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what people like us do in this business. We take the weak person and we try to knock them down to make ourselves bigger. That's why you got so many pricks that have made money and so many guys that have just starved. Tully, the worst person in the world. Why is that? I tell him that every time I talk to him. I said, Tully, I'm the only guy in the business that likes you. <laughs> and, Lord, and Tully, getting the Lord is not going to help you, boy. <laughs> I mean, gosh, these guys that do that, just they amaze me. Tully, you're a screw up like I was. Forget the Lord. He can't forgive the bullshit. Yeah. Here, Vince McMahon didn't do nothing to help him. You know, it's all right, Vince. Import some steroids, but don't help the boys. Scott Casey was there. Scott Casey and I had this big thing where I think Scott, I dumped cow stuff on Scott's yeah. head or Scott dumped it on mine. I can't, yeah, I remember. Don't worry. Remember in that. Florida, when him and Barry wrapped their car around a damn telephone pole, and not just a telephone pole, but an electric station outside of Bradenton, and I get a phone call, I go down and pick him up. I says, man, I'm a heel, you guys are baby. That's all right, we need somebody to give us a ring. We'll come in here and talk about him being a no-good SOB and a, just a piece of junk. Dusty Rhodes, uh, I know that I was never paid what I should have been paid. I walked up and told him, I said I was going to quit the business. He said, oh, you need two weeks off. And he had the gimmick, you know, the stutter and everything else. I'll give you two. I said, no, Dusty. I said, I'm done. I'm quitting. Barry, Barry and I had fantastic. He was so green, but he was so willing to learn, and he was such a good, he was so easy to teach. They wanted David to learn to be a heel. And so consequently, I was elected to help him learn to be a heel. And David and I, until the day he died, were very good friends. Even when I was in San Antonio working for Southwest, before he went to Japan, before he passed away, he come by the house and told him, I don't know if this is common knowledge or anything, but David had come by the house and told me and my wife that they were going to put the world championship on him when he got back in Japan. Hmm. And he told me that he would erased all the demons and that he was going straight. And I said, great. And the next thing I know, I got a call from Frank that he found him dead. And Fritz right. von Erich, he was the biggest asshole in the world. Hmm. The Lord's not going to save you if you were a bigot. The Lord's not going to save so. All you boys that are praising the Lord and all, you're all con artists. Sorry, DiBiase, Blanchard, Watts, grow up. I couldn't go to the funeral because I was working for Southwest, and back then kayfabe was a big deal. We go out in the ring and we start working, and at first, I mean, he didn't. Have, whoever had trained him or sent him anywhere, he didn't have a goddamn clue. We go out in the ring and we start working, and. At first, I mean, he didn't, have, whoever had trained him or sent him anywhere, he didn't have a goddamn clue. Kept coming to the dressing room all the time saying, well, Jerry Lawler's the best bump man in the business. Jerry Lawler's the best bump man. Well, Jerry Lawler can't take a backdrop off my butt. Kept coming to the dressing room all the time saying, well, Jerry Lawler's the best bump man in the business. Jerry Lawler's the best bump man. Well, Jerry Lawler can't take a backdrop off my butt. I says, what the hell are you doing here, Dream? He says, I told you you're coming to Charlotte. I said, I don't want to go to Charlotte. And standing next to him was the idiot of the world, Jim Crockett. And he said, well, I just bought this son of a bitch. You're coming to Charlotte. Sure. And the other asshole, Lex Luger. Just find somewhere to go and lay down, Lex. You've always been a piece of shit. You never could work. You never could talk. You always had to have a crutch. And now you're beating up goddamn women. Boy, you're one tough, muscle-built son of a bitch, aren't you? Hogan, Flair, all you, it's over, man, it's done. The 15 and 16 year old kids don't want you no more. Hell, the 40 year olds don't want you no more. Quit, get a life. Abby was in there, Spivey, um, 
Sika, the Samoans, uh, myself, uh, Crawford, and there, there a couple of the Puerto Rican guys. Brody got in a fight in the dressing room, and it, he fell against the porcelain sink and cut himself. I said, wait a minute. Big man get in a fight and fall against the porcelain sink and cut himself? Bullshit. When he comes over again, I said, cheeky, I said, you ask this piece of shit, what the hell's going on? I said, something's going on that we don't know about. And so then that's when they said that Brody had been stabbed, but they said he'd been stabbed by a fan. And I thought, well, why would they stab a baby face? We were sitting there getting the referee's instructions, and I said, what the hell's going on, guys? And Dutch looked me right in the eye, and he says, Jose stabbed Brody. I said, what? He said, Jose stabbed Brody, and Brody's in bad shape. And I told her, I says, Frank's died. I says, we don't know what's going on. I says, I think the best thing for you and the girls is to get off this goddamn rock tonight. The Puerto Rican wrestlers, the American wrestlers, got together in a hotel, and we said, bullshit, we're not going. You know, this is bullshit to kill somebody in this goddamn business. And what it was, Frank Brody was out for Frank Brody. But Frank was a truthful man. And I'm not saying Frank was the greatest guy in the world, because believe me, Frank could be a prick. But you had to respect him. Spineless. Absolutely goddamn spineless. I thought Carlos was one of my friends. I thought Carl and Carlos was a great worker and a good good person at one time. After this, spineless. The wrestling office did. All three of the pricks. Hmm. Not one, three of them. Who was and the... Victor, if you were still alive, Victor Keones, you would tell the goddamn truth if you had a ball one. Brody took liberties with fucking everybody. Everybody. I worked with him. He took liberties with me. You gave liberties back to him. He never bitched. He never cried and whined and moaned. The only reason is Jose was jealous. Number one, Brody was over more than he was. Number two, Brody was always going to be over more than he was. Number three was Brody wouldn't listen to him when he thought he was a big man in Puerto Rico and pay his goddamn taxes. He told him to go to hell and jam him up his ass. Hogan, Flair, there's a bunchy out there. It's over. You're going to end up as a byline on a movie.